What's poppin' y'all? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're taking a look at a Netflix film, um, which is surprising that this is on Netflix because normally Nickelodeon have collaborations and a very good partnership with Paramount, and Paramount Plus have their own, um, blah, 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 have their own streaming service. There we go. Uh, but no, this one is on Netflix. So if you do want to watch it, uh, I do recommend you do definitely go check out Netflix to watch this movie. But we are taking a look at the last installment of the Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This only got two seasons before it was cancelled and one movie. And if I'm going to be honest, I regret not giving this a try. I regret not um, pushing for this more because... After watching the movie, which is the only part of the rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles I've seen at this moment in time, I'm going to watch the show uh, later on uh, this week, but I do regret not watching uh, the show when it was originally starting out. I just, as soon as it was announced, I was on the, the hate bandwagon for it, and I regret that a lot. Um, just being straight on in with hating it, um, based on the new cast and growing up with the 2012 series and having that gone for five seasons and really enjoying all of that, seeing this big drastic reboot change, I didn't really like it, um, and I didn't like the new voices, um, so I didn't have high hopes for it and I did, just didn't watch it due to me not having time and me going towards anime at this moment in time when this was released and watching more anime, but getting into the movie, um, it does start with the future, which is an apocalypse where the Krang have taken over Earth, and Leo is a really good leader, um, and he's fighting back against the Krang, Krang using a rebellion. Raph and Donny have died, I assume, because they're not in this at all. We have Casey Jones, which is a new freedom fighter being introduced here, and Michelangelo, who is like a wizard Doctor Strange monk character, which I think is really badass and a lot better than the Raphael versus the mutant wasteland. Um, I much prefer this version of the apocalypse out of the turtles. I just think it has a lot better characters from it. Um, but Mikey kills himself to open a portal through time to send Casey back in time to stop this from ever happening. So we have a time travel story, which is pretty unique for the Turtles. Uh, we've only ever seen time travel twice in the Turtles' history, if I am not mistaken, in the third installment of the original trilogy of films, which was the hated one and the reason why it stopped, didn't get a fourth. And... In the 20, 2003 show, when they went back in time... Oh, no, they went forward in time. And that one, they didn't go back in time, they went forward in time. So, this being a time travel story, I think, is a bold move after Turtles getting really bad results from time travel stories. Uh, but I think this is one of the better ones. And it has more of an anime-esque fight style, an animation style, because of the power sets and the move sets that these turtles have and the actions that they do. It's really fast and quick paced, dramatic fighting, like in Bleach, like in Naruto, like in Attack on Titan. And I really like that. I like the fast paced, bright colors, extreme power sets that these turtles have. So that's why I'm regretting not watching it because this film was really good and it had me on the edge of my seat. This film was insane. But then it cuts to, uh, four heroes in the current time and they're playing a game of topping 50 pizzas on your head and walking up um, the side of the Empire State Bridge. I could be wrong with that. I don't know New York too well. But Leo does it. He breaks his record. They go and celebrate. They go and do a mission and Leo, again, thinking he's so cool because he's still on that high from beating his own record, ends up screwing up the mission because he's too confident, too cocky, and too wild and out there. And this ends up with the thing that Casey's supposed to stop, and stop being stolen, still getting stolen. And Casey does fall into their lair, and they do booby trap him. There is a couple of jokes and a couple of quips that are made about time travel, with Casey Jones trying to explain himself, and then they believe him, 
They make a plan. They, they go out to get the stolen thing back. They fail again due to Leo's big-headedness because of Casey Jones seeing Leo as this fearful, this great... Fit, no, fearless, sorry. Fearless, great, strong, powerful hero leader that Leo aspires to be and Leo wants to be. So again, he gets all big-headed, all cocky, thinking he can do it himself and ends up getting Raph captured and Raph stuck and merged into this Krang monster. Because, of course, it's the Krang for the villain of this film. And the Krang are bringing the Technodrone, uh, or their own version of the Technodrone, this big machine, through the portal, and it ends up taking over Raph. So then Leo and Casey have a talk about how Leo's not the leader he thought he was. Leo gets sad. Casey then realizes he shouldn't have said all that horrible stuff, tries to cheer him up. Leo has that empowerment moment. They go rescue Raph. And in rescuing Raph, Donnie hooks up to the machine. Mikey unlocks um, some stuff uh, on the sort of portal area. And Leo pushes Craig back through the portal and he holds him there while Donnie closes the portal which leaves Leo trapped in the Krang dimension to be beaten up by the Krang forever. Once he's through the portal and keeps him there, he just accepts being beaten. He doesn't even have the effort or the motivation to fight back because he has nothing to fight for anymore. He's stuck in their dimension. He can't get home until Mikey unlocks his potential and opens a portal to rescue Leo and keep the Krang stuck. So Mikey pulls Leo out and... The ship explodes inside the portal, and all of our turtles are back together on Earth. And I did cry when Leo got stuck on the other side of that portal, but they pulled a Scooby movie. Do you know the Scooby movie where, like, they push Shaggy through the portal and he ends up getting trapped there, but they bring him back? They pull a Scooby movie, and I was crying. I cried. Because I thought, you know, Leo sacrificed himself for his family. He learned his mistake from the past two times. He, he reflected, he changed, and he proved himself to be a good leader and a good hero by saving his family and sacrificing himself to do so. And I thought it was really cool. We do have a sky beam here, which I haven't seen in films for ages. We have a big portal in the sky. We have floating debris. We have... Fall, like them falling off this debris, fighting the Krang. We have some really cool aerial shots and some aerial fights with them flying through the air. And I think that's really cool. I always like it when we have like action sequences with them driving cars or in planes and jumping out of planes. I always love them scenes the most. I just think they're so cool, so action-packed and so creative and clever. So having them do this at the end had me on the edge of my seat and then made me cry when Leo sacrificed himself. I, I, I wasn't a, f a fan of their designs or voice actors when I first watched the trailer, first saw the teaser for it. So I just gave up on it instantly. But going back to watch this and this being my first experience with it, it was excellent. I really enjoyed it. Ben Swartz, the voice actor for Sonic, also voices Leonardo. And he does such a good job. And I've seen loads of people on TikTok use Sonic voice clips for Leo and Leo voice clips for Sonic. And it has such a good, wholesome fan base. I've seen some pictures and some TikToks and they're all so sweet and wholesome. And like the fan base absolutely adores this show. And it's such a shame that it got canceled. But this last movie went out with an absolute fucking bang. The animation styles, which I thought looked shit after what... After coming back to it, after watching so much anime, I can respect it. I respect this anime, animation style. All the quick fights, all the power sets. And I, I, I like it when each person who gets a chance to make a turtle story of their own does what they want with it and creates it and reimagines their origin story, redoes it to fit the story, the narrative that they want to show. And I like that because it brings some new fresh ideas to the table. Like we have Raph having a do-rag now, Donatello having tech on his back, which was brought in by the 2014 film. And April has a lot of changes in this show as well, which again, from this point forward, from the rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 
have kept going forward. We have kept this new April, and I, I, I am a big fan of this new April. We also have the turtles being different turtles. We have Leo here being like a, a red striped turtle, and then Raph being a snapping turtle. It gives them their own different turtles, which I quite like. I like the idea that they're not all the same turtle. It gives more variety and more difference and more sort of character to them with not having them all being the same. They also have mystic powers, which I didn't expect to see. Leo can teleport with his swords. Each sword is like a connector to the other one, so you can throw one and then use the other one to teleport to that one. We also have uh, Donnie, which can create massive tech machines. We have Raph, which can create like fist gloves and like big, he can upsize his muscles basically with this big red glow. And then Mikey can like grow his chain and sort of stretch around his nunchucks, like a, a whip and stretch them around. I just think it's so cool. Like their powers are insane in this film. And they're, in this show, their powers are so cool. Like they've never had these mystic powers before. They've never had um, these really cool abilities. So it's a really cool and unique iteration of the turtles. The also this film and this show has changed my power ranking, not my power ranking, my hierarchy of turtles. Michelangelo has always been at the top and he still is at the top. Donatello was always second. Leo was last and Raph was third. That was how it was until I watched this. Leo has jumped up to second in this. Donnie's third, Raph is last. And then with watching Mutant Mayhem, I put Donnie last and Raph in third. These new iterations of Leo have really made me like Leo more than some of the other characters. And this is a Leo-led film. We've had a couple of Raph-led films, but this one is all about Leo. This is how he's trying to become the leader he's supposed to be. He's the hope. He's giving them all hope. He's the one that is trying to, you know, bring the team together. He's trying to prove he can be a leader and prove that he can keep the team going because through this film and i'm gonna say the show as well raf seems to be more of the like parent of the group and leo seems to be the more impulsive one and this cam raf i don't know i'm not i'm not really a fan of this camera raf he seems to be too mature for the rest of the turtles but leo is more hyped he's more like impulsive he isn't as stuck up as before he want, he's still aspiring to be this great leader, but he's not as sort of stubborn or as stuck up as the other Leos that we've had. He's not as sort of cocky. If he, Well, he is, he is cocky. That, that, that was the wrong word. He, he is the definition of cocky in this film. He is, like, big-headed and everything, but he isn't as, like, rude or as angry towards his brothers for not following his every order. And I like this version of Leo a lot more. This is a better Leo, which I hope to see more of. Go in with an open mind. See what it has to offer. And if you don't like it after watching it, that's completely fine. But don't shit on it if you haven't watched it. And th this was the definition that like really stuck that in my head of don't shit on it before you watch it. Don't judge a book by its cover. Because I really thought that this was going to be shit. And I, I don't know why. I, I don't remember my justification. I really enjoyed the that style opinion. of this show. And I'm so glad that I uh, did some of the voices still to give this a chance. Off, like because Raph's now voice I have the opportunity still, to I don't know, just hopefully watch something that's it's not incredible. how I imagine Raph to sound. Uh, because and that's after watching so, the 20 I hope that the like, series holds up to the standard that this so, film has. Because it, it, it will throw the community is so lovely. But I do the want to show base is so lovely for this show. I do want to get in particular rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja figures. Although I do, I think cannot that the praise this film enough. It is getting it a ten like out of ten. The art style I said well, it. It's my first ten out of ten in a while. From 2D to but 3D, from the I'm sorry. show to the figures, looks absolutely atrocious. I feel but rude giving it anything. I, less. I, I want to show my support for the series because I this feel movie absolutely was absolutely insane. Less. I remember the sat, pacing. I was, was ill. 
I was really taking good. day off from work. It was, I was like, quick. you know what, fuck it. Put it, it got on. to the point. It's so that I can nap to anything. Gonna, you and know, it's all the boring, action gonna shit, gonna was sleep. really good. And I was sat really in my seat. So I was crying. I was, and I was so excited. I was hyped. And I, 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 it, I, it was cannot, I cannot resist. It was so intense. And I loved um, it. It was if, great. If you hate the rise and of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and you haven't watched it, shitting on this series so please do consider watching the film. When it's only an hour and a half. I shit on it without it's giving it a, a chance. Shorter and than watching with this the series, show, it's, and it, it showed me not to do that. It'll make you want to watch the series. Going to everything with an open mind. Watching this show will just make you want to watch the series. Shit from the trailer, it, or from the get-go. I'm going to go watch the series just now, go. and I'll be back with each season with its own film review later on. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. See you all in the next one. Have a nice day. And this does deserve the ten out of ten. It does not deserve all the hate. It deserves more seasons. All right, bye bye.